1825, July 29th, 1875. He died at the age of 49. He was an American medical doctor, an occultist, and writer. Randolph is notable as perhaps the first person to introduce the principles of sex magic to North America. And according to A.E. Wakes, who is the author of the Holy Kabbalah, established the earliest known Rosicrucian order in the United States. And in fact, he became the supreme grand master of all the Rosicrucians in the world in 1996. In other words, he, this more ran the goddamn Illuminati, as you call it. This more. Yeah, he says it. He said his mother is a Moor. Hunt Simon Moor. Oh, okay. Matter of fact, you can get this from this book. Pastel Beverly Randolph, a 19th century black American spiritualist, Rosicrucian, and sex magician. This is John D. De, um, um, Davini, um, Davini and Franklin Rosemont. Get the book. Yeah, right there. Past? No. no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Tiano. <laughs> right. Right. We, we, yeah, ain't no Port Riches up in this motherfucker. That's right. That's right. That's right. Costa Rica either. Ain't no cause for the riches either. Ain't none of that shit. All those are damn made up bullshit names. You are Tiano or, Arraw or um, Arawak. Cherokee. All right. Cherokee and Arawak mixed in with each other. The mainland mixed in with the um, islanders. Same people. But he is Pastel Beverly Randolph, and the book is called The 19th Century Black American Spiritualist, Rosicrucian, and Sex Magician. I ain't write that damn book. So, now that you understand the real science behind the Osarian mysteries, and the reason why um, they have to demonify it, is because here in 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that your temple of God, that do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you was bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. 2 Corinthians 6 through 16, 8. For ye are the temple of the living God, and God has said, I will dwell in them and walk amongst them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, say the Lord Almighty. So where God dwells at? Where the Holy Spirit dwells at? All right. Where the Spirit of God dwells at, which is Jesus. All within. So all three aspects dwells within you. The Holy Trinity is within you. And what they are saying is that this energy must be used correctly. How we know? Let's continue on. Here's the Temple of Man, written by Swala Lubix. The Lubix. <coughs> The temple and man's body. Man is a square, an oblong square. Therefore, the temple is in man, and the church building is a type of man, while man is truth. How so explain? The first temple is called the tabernacle, Exodus 26, a type of Solomon's temple of one to come. In Genesis 3.15, we see another interesting truth springing from an earthly truth man having fallen from grace and has to be redeemed. However, it is not time yet. It is not yet time. A man has to stumble in darkness, ignorance, until he masters his earthly passions. Hence the reason for the apron. That's the reason why you have the aprons, brother. Because you haven't mastered your sexual desires. Until he masters his earthly desires and set his heart and soul on things of a heavenly nature, by being raised from a dead level of earthly weakness to a high plane of divine intelligence. God damn, faith. Knowing. So if you want to be at a 90 degree perpendicular level, you are at this state first, horizontal. Animal state. Animal passions. However, you must raise yourself to this level, 90 degrees perpendicular. The resurrection of Osar. 
Then you see it. So you must be like the, the little man and be the big man. That's the image in which that you coming in, brothers. There is an explanation of why the Old Testament to prepare. Why the New Testament to perfect. So the Old Testament is teaching you how to prepare because they tell you about the eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. By the time you get to the New Testament, they tell you about another tree, which is called the tree of life that you now must eat from. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil shows you about the science of sex. However, as we continue reading through the various books coming from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it is actually telling you how to use sex now in order to better yourself, to raise yourself. How you know? Because it starts out with the book of Genesis. I take the IS off. What you got? Gene. Your genes. <laughs> Where your genes come from? How you produce your genes? You come, thank you. So, so who, who said that shit? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one more time. Say that one more time, yo. Through sex. One more time. Through sex. One more time. S E X. Sex. No, oh, I ain't, yeah, one more time. S E X. Sex. That's how you get your genes. Very simple, isn't it? Um, I wanted to know real quick, um, does that correlate anywhere with Lilith when they talk it, about the story of Lilith? Yes, you wasn't in here. You must, you, yeah, but we just finished talking about Lilith and how she, yeah, I see. How she didn't want to lay on her back. And so hence, because she didn't want to lay on her back for Adam, she became a demon. You know, that was supposedly the story of the Jewish law. And Lilith, you know what I'm saying, means darkness. So she became a demon and flew away, you know what I'm saying? Supposedly she grew wings um, when she became a demon. And what happened is that then supposedly she went out to attack children. That's the so-called Jewish law. You know what I'm saying? All of that is allegorical, as we said in the beginning. All right? Lilith symbolizes the fact of you using the lower nature and it's not being properly utilize. So you have a tendency of flying off at the handle, males and females. In other words, the shit feels so good to you till you want to give it to somebody else over and over again. And not just that, to multiple overs and overs again. Hold on, who's seen the movie um, Colored Girl that just came out? Anybody seen that shit? Yo, uh, I ain't going to promote that shit. I ain't going to promote that shit. You know, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but what I'm talking about is the female in the movie. Female in the movie, she just couldn't get enough of sexing, yo. Seriously. You know what I'm saying? She even said it. You know what I'm saying? So if you go to the movie and see Color Girl, you, you're going to see that aspect in there dealing with women. Okay? And of course, you see the same thing with the brothers, too, because they shitty up in the movie. Yeah. The three sections, right, the three sections are associated with the two stones, the rough ashlar and the perfect ashlar, and the trussel board, representing the three degrees of the Masonic Lodge, namely the inter apprentice, the basic, the fellow craftsman, the intelligence, and the master mason, the spiritual. Refer to David's Psalm 15, um, 51, 5 through 19, for the essential man from his lowly state of iniquity, sin, Psalms 51.5 to salvation, Psalms 51.14. Throughout the Old Testament, we read of man imperfections to ways to obtain near perfection in the New Testament. However, man cannot ascend until he realizes he has descended. Seriously. And that's how you know you ain't grown, because when the hill becomes we, <laughs> us, our, that's how you know you've grown spiritually. But as long as you're talking about me, myself, and I, then you know that you're still within the four devils. You don't believe me? Go to the justice lesson of the 1 through 14 of the nation of gods on earth. Why must Muhammad or any Muslim murder the devil? He's talking about the four devils. You must bring four devils in order to be murdered. The four devils is your heart chakra, solar plexus, your navel chakra, and your genitalia. Because that is where the, the emotions resonate at. The emotions resonate in that area. And your emotions make good servants, but poor masters. 
You can't use your emotions to master shit. It gets you fucked up every time. Try to use them. <laughs> Try to use your emotions in a thinking situation. You're trying to take a test. You can't think. Your damn mind go fucking blank. I know, I done been there. Damn, trying to take a test in class and shit. God damn, I knew this shit last night when I studied it. <laughs> but I got fucking anxieties and shit. God damn. What the fuck is that shit? A, B, <laughs> See? Shit. You can't use your emotions in order to um, to rectify situations and get you in more shit. So once again, it makes good servants for poor masters. You must use your rationale in order to solve problems. That's what this is talking about. And only then can you ascend from out of the four devils into the three immortal bodies in which that was just speaking about where God, the Spirit of God, which we refer to as Christ, and the Holy Spirit dwells at, which is the three higher chakras, throat chakra, pineal gland, or pituitary gland, pineal gland, or crown chakra. Those are the three bodies that survive death. That's what happens. The four bodies that we just talked about dies along with the physical body. They dissipate and go back to the realm of form. The three higher bodies survive death. That is called your Aku, your Ka, and your Ba. Once again, Ku, Aku, or Ku, your glorified body. But the words which that you speak, the power of words is fantastic. The power of sound is fantastic. Sound travels 1,129 1, feet per second. And it comes from the realm of light. As light is being slowed, that, that, that travels at 186,000 miles per second. Hence, Jesus is the light of the world. Come out your pituitary gland. Hence, it taps into your pineal gland, which is thought, which travels at what? 24 billion miles per second. So as the thought slow down to light, slow down to the speed of sound. Forms the physical body through the four devils, or the four elements, earth, air, water, and fire, into physical formation. You see this? Here goes the temple of man. This is actually at Heru Temple from out of Egypt. This is in the book of um, the temple of man. It is nothing more than the overlay of man himself. You have the outer gates. Let's see here, there we go. You have the outer gates coming into the two pillars, symbolic to Boaz and Jason. And then you have the holy place. And then as you come up, you have the holy of holies. This is also the same as the Mosaic temple, Solomon's temple, that is mentioned in the Old Testament. Hypothetical correspondence between ancient Egypt, Egyptian cosmology and the cranial vault in your brain. Here's Heru and the sun disk. You see that? Is the exact same thing in your brain. You see that? And what is this? This is called the digit, the backbone of Osiris, which is your spinal column. And it's talking about the two sacral nerves that exist on the side of your spinal column crisscrossing each other up to the nostrils. And as you do the breathing exercises, you illuminate the backbone of Osiris and bring the Kundalini energy up called the Shashuna, the hollow area in the point in the back, to gain enlightenment through the brain and open up the various vaults of the brain, removing the veils. This is what is called the pituitary gland, which symbolizes Isis, pineal gland that symbolizes Osa, thalamus gland that symbolizes Ra, Sundis, and the corpus, um, colorius, or colosum, 
um, which is the bark or the boat of Ra. This shit is in your brain. Here, Medulla on the goddess symbolizes his rule. So as the energy comes up through the spinal column, it enlightens and brings about a transformation within the brain in which they give you the ability of the vault of heaven. You have now reached into the kingdom of God. Because according to Luke 17, 21, the kingdom of God is within you. This is the great temple of Heru. At Badat, at Ifu. This is the peristyle courtyard. It symbolizes the great open space, inundated by sunlight, and in the middle of a square altar, the first stone or the beginning of the divine transformation, the four elements of creation, the cardinal points, the four sons of Heru, the four fundamental parts of man, are encountered in the open. The preparatory uh, work done here implies a superficial purification or visible entrance into the mysteries of transformation. In Edfu, the physical and moral foundation of the great works are represented by Malakut of the Kabbalah. So when you take the Kabbalah and overlay it on over here on even the temples at Edfu, the temple of Hetheru, you would get the same sciences being dropped because the temples was based on the science of the body. The Bible even says, do you not know that your body is the temple of God? So guess what? Remember, the ancient Egyptians was bringing heaven to earth. They also said, as above, so below. As within, so without. So everything that they did was based on the enlightenment of the physical body and the science of life. Here you have the, pon the ponados, um, the hyperstyle um, halls, the mysterious space of shadow representing the original marshes of creation and the forest that have vanished on the now. It's a, um, approached in two ways, first from the curtain of walls, the ponels, and then from the four walls, the hyperstyle hall, and in the great hall, um, consciousness plunged into eternity. Here, the true foundation of the um, process of transformation was laid. Rituals which erect a staple um, structure into the vast expanse of the primordial waters, leading into the new spiritual foundation, the Yasin, which is mentioned in the Kabbalah. Then you have the offering hall, or the Abu Lortori, um, which is talking about the house or the hall of offering, the first um, of the room of the house, the sanctuary, um, that takes you into the Holy of Holies. Um, which is the hall of, um, of the house of offering, veiled by darkness, representing the soul. Remember, Adam, um, um, Amen, is known as the hidden one. That is talking about the soul in your body being hidden inside of your pineal gland. The soul is hidden inside of your pineal gland. Because of his sacrifice, the soul of the deity will be gratified and the soul of the aspire will be blessed with life, prosperity, and health. One that is into the kingdom of heaven um, but the king was nowhere to be seen or heard. Um, the abulatory um, abulatory, um, underlines the spiritual communion nature of these sacred grounds, walked on by the high priest and a selected number of other priests. Only um, pharaohs stood at higher levels, or levels higher, for he, like the hidden Atum, or later Amun, faced the cult deity alone. This is the same thing that you find within the Mosaic temples up under the Levi priests. Only the high Levi priest was able to go into what? The Holy of Holies. This is seen in the movie, what? Coming from the ancient um, um, temples from Egypt, Kemet, Tamaria, or Tamaria. There it is. You find it at Etfu, Temple of Heru. You find it at the Temple of Hetheru. You find it there. It's there. And then you have the inter sanctum, a nose, surrounded by the chapel, the deity was enthroned in this um, shrine, or more sacred ground, the Holy of Holies, and the inter sanctum to be accessed by Pharaoh or his representatives alone. This is the same thing of the Levite priests in your Bible. If the Levite priests would not write, if they touched the Ark of the Covenant, they would die. What happened to the men on the Raiders of the Lost Ark when they touched the Ark of the Covenant? They what happened? They, right. The electricity or the electromagnetism 
kilter. So your heart and mind has to be right. And what is in here is the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. In the Ark of the Covenant, you have the staff, according to the Mosaic law and teachings, you have the staff of Moses, which was able to turn into the serpent. So that's talking about your spinal column, the staff. The turning into the serpent is talking about the Kundalini energy, the serpentine fire. Then you have the two tablets of Moses with the um, strife um, laws, five on one, five on another, of the ten laws of the commandments. That is nothing more than the right and left hemisphere of your brain, the cerebrums. You have two um, cerebrums, left and right hemisphere of the brain. They are called the covering. And the word cerebrum is the same word as cherubims in your Bible. So they're telling you the Holy of Holies is your head. And the covering protects your pineal gland with the soul that's embedded inside of. That is your God. Do you know that the sperm travels up the spinal column? In order to get bathed in the nutrients of the cerebral. So it moves from prostate fluid to the spinal fluid to the cerebral fluids to get baptized in the third ventricle, which is overseen by the pineal gland. It is hidden in the shrine. So the 13, so the 13 um, chapel symbolizes the 13 constellations. The brother was getting ready to get into it about officius, the serpent wrestler. He told you that it sits between Scorpio and Sagittarius. That is symbolic to the days and the month being changed. In other words, instead of 31 days, it would be actually 28 days for each month as the 13th sign begins to come further in and conjoin and associate itself with the 12 zodiac signs on which that is going on right now. So it starts out at the five days, as the brother was saying, but eventually it becomes 28 days, just like any of the other um, days in a month. Somebody count 28 times 13. What's the number? It's 364 days. How many days in a, is in a year? 365. 365. So a nigga add leap like they always do. Nah. <laughs> 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 in the Kabbalah, Azuluf, the realm or the world of divine presence, the four three supernova seraphims, which is the spheres of, um, of light, or the spheres of light, of the tree of life, and the Shekinah. The Shekinah is another name in Hebrew for Segmat, is another name for the Kundalini energy, pertains to the same mystical, myst mystical near, um, nearness as Pharaoh's central shrine ritual in the inter sanctum of the Egyptian temple. This is the same symbol in which that Brother Joel was just talking about too. When he said the man sits in the center of that particular, um, of course we know that's Leonardo da Vinci's um, drawing of the man. Um, however, is within um, the formation of the tree of life, as well as also within the six-pointed star. Of course, we know that if you lay the six-pointed star configuration over the human body at 19 degrees. Remember, he said it was 19 circles. But the Joel told you in the beginning of the first symbol that he showed you of the tree of life, or what is also called the flower of life, he showed you that there was 19 circles. Well, at 19 degrees on the tetrahedron, which is an overlaid structure, the hexagram over the human body, at 19 degrees there's an upswelling of energy. That upswelling of energy is called the Kundalini, or the Shekinah, or the Sekum, or what is also called Sekmat. So at 19 degrees, that upswelling of energy is called the Kundalini also. So, as that energy comes up, it is also shown on the walls of ancient Egypt, this tree of life. And as you see here, this is the Uraeus, this is Atan in the center here with the wings coming out, which is talking about the expansion of the mind, which is talking about actually the opening and awakening of the left and right hemisphere of the brain. In other words, using 100% usage of the brain instead of 10% brainers. Because they tell you that the average person only uses 2 to 10% of their brain. So what's the other um, 90 and 98% to use for? What would you use that for? What, you wipe your ass with it? That's what most of us do. 
You eat, sleep, shit, fucking go to work. That's your five pillars of faith, you Islam niggas. <laughs> See, in Islam, seriously, in Islam, they got their five pillars of faith, right? What, what are they? Saun, which is fasting. Right? Come on. El Hajj, which is going to Mecca. Sakat, which is charity. Come on. Who? Prayer, which is dua, or what is also called salat. And the last one is called shahata, which is you bearing witness. So see, Islam has their five pillars of faith, but the nigga have their five pillars of faith every day. Eat, sleep, shit, fucking go to work. That's his five pillars of faith every day. He loved that shit. <laughs> 70 damn years worth of that shit. And then when niggas come like us come along, we fucking crazy. <laughs> nigga, you don't want to spend 70 fucking years damn eating, sleeping, shit, and fucking going to work. I ain't coming for that shit. Anyway, here go another um, in the cuneate form on the walls of the Sumerian text or the Sumerian um, information coming from Babylon, um, Ura, or what is also called Chaldea. Uh, this is also within the um, Akkadian. Um, what you see here are the angels called the cherum. The cherums is nothing more than the same word as cherubims within the Hebrew, which is nothing more than talking about your cerebrums your cerebellums, your cerebrum. You got two cerebrums. And so hence, it is protection, the covering. You see that? The priest is adding the covering. And what is that over? Right there, the third eye, which the soul is embedded inside of. And as that kundalini energy comes up through the spinal column, you see this? This is the sacral bone nerve. And as that energy comes up, it enlightens the pineal gland, which is all saw, the seat of all saw, because Osar sits on the throne of all set, in which that brings forth the awakened soul, which is Heru. That's what this is all symbolic to. All right? If you don't believe me, go to Nutricize, page 15 of um, Layla Africa's book. He shows you on page 15 that um, the brain was blown up to the equivalent size of a car. And hovering over the pineal gland was a galaxy like cloud. This is the galaxy light cloud that hovers over your pineal gland. And you must beam me up, Scotty. Scottish rights. Beam me up, Scotty, to man your damn ship. Your UFO. Your Nibiru. Your Nibiru is inside of you. So if you niggas are waiting for a ship to come down, uh, you're going to keep waiting. Not saying that there ain't no ships and there ain't extraterrestrials, but they ain't coming to see your ass. You ain't did no spiritual um, um, meditation, no breathing, no qigong, tai chi, no reiki, no pranic healing. You ain't did none of that shit. You ain't trying to better yourself. What the they coming to see your ass for? What, for they can see how much trouble their asses can get in fucking around with you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They see this shit as a fucking cesspool. That's what they see this as. And until you can damn form your macabre, then you ain't going to see them, neither. Because they definitely don't want to see your ass. So here go the Hebrew translation of this. As you see here, you have the altar of sacrifice, which symbolizes the feet, Pisces. Then you have Jason and Boaz, Right? Which symbolizes Aquarius going into um, Capricorn. Also Sagittarius. You hear you have the porch. Symbolizes Scorpio. Now in between Sagittarius and Scorpio, we just told you the 13th joint. So in between the porch and here, of Sagittarius and Scorpio, you will have officius coming up the holy um, place. You have Virgo, um, excuse me, um, Libra, Virgo. You have Leo at the heart, 
Um, here, right up under the heart, you have cancer. Here you have Gemini, which symbolizes the shoulders or the cells of the priest. Here you have the throat, which symbolizes Taurus. Oh, excuse me, um, the throat that symbolizes Taurus. And here you have the head, which symbolizes Aries. So they based it on astrology as above, so below, as within, so without, the whole thing. Here, the high priest as the temple of man. The priest cells as the turban, west side, gold and silver bullion. This is 1 Kings 751. Was likely stored there or here. These cells from the high priest's head covering or um, turban mentioned in Exodus 8, 4 through 37. The common priest's cap or bonnet. Um, this is, in other words, this is it right here. This kufi. Or what is it referred to also as a yarmulke. This is what this is talking about. Exodus 28, 4 was a um, globular resemblance of an inverted bowl. This is what this is. Now, who you seen first with this on in ancient Kemet was Ptah. You see him with a skull cap on. This is where Islam gets it from. This is where Christianity and Judaism get it from. And where they wear the yarmulke or the little small cap, as they say um, about the um, Catholic priests. It's all the same thing. It comes from Ptah. And Ptah was known as the father of all the gods or the netter of all the netter rules. Okay? Yes? Yeah, that's, that's the same thing. Yeah, it's a copy off the ancient Egyptian walls of Ptah. The word Ptah means the opener. What is the first chapter in the Quran, y'all? Al-Fatiha. Fatiha. Fata, Fata, Fatiha. Same word as Puta. The opener. And his Fatiha means to open in. What is it opening if the last book in, um, um, in the Bible is the book of what? Revelations. So it starts out with the book of Genesis, your genes. And by the time you get to the New Testament, you must reveal that which is encoded in your genes. And then by the time you get to the Holy Quran, which is 78% of the Bible, I mean, excuse me, 78%, yeah, it's 78% of the Bible, the Holy Quran is. The other 27% comes from the Zoroastrian text, which is called the Advin um, um, Aveda. It comes from the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden. And it also comes from the Apocrypha. That's where the other 27% um, of the um, Holy Quran comes from. The other 73% comes directly out the Bible. Same biblical stories. So, the first book, after revealing that which is encoded in your genes, is the opening in the book of the Holy Quran. And it starts out with seven stanzas. So, amazing. The book of Revelation deals with the number seven 19 times. We just told you about the signs of 19, and then seven times. So, 19 symbolizes the location of the Kundalini energy, the upswelling of energy, and then the opening of the seven seals. And then the first book is El Fatiha, the opening. And you go into it. Bismillah, El Rahman, El Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Ayla, Amin. El Rahman, El Rahim, Maliki, Yamadin. Hmm, that's interesting. The mean sounds. If you check the alphabets of the Hebrew and of the Arabic, the 16th and 18th letter within each one is the ayn symbol, sound. You know what the symbol of the ayn is? It's one eye, an eye, one eye. So it says the stanza is written seven times in El Fatiha, showing that the seven symbolizes the awakening of the seven Elohim, or the seven eyes of Allah, which is mentioned within the 101 of what? Of the Moorish, thank you, of the question, questionnaire for the Moorish Americans or the Moorish children. And it says right in the back, how many eyes are there? Or better yet, what do the eyes mean? It says the eyes of Allah, it says the Elohim. Right, the seven Elohims. Or the seven souls of Ra, which it comes from the seven souls of Ra. I told you at the SETI debate that the ancient name for Allah 
coming from off the walls of ancient Egypt is Ur. Ur. And you roll your tongue with that shit. U R R A. Ur. Ra. The word Ur Ra became Allah. U L L A H. And so when they're saying Allah, 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 they call it on Ur Ra. Ur Ra. Ur Ra. The ancient name of Ra. Ra means solar power, photonic energy, light. The sun. And you have an inner sun. How do you think your body stays at a 98.6 degrees temperature? How, that sh how you do that shit? If there's not a sun within you. So what you're doing is channeling more energy into you in order to increase the life force. This is the science of pranic, reiki, chi, Thank you. Meditation. Sit and be still and know God. Oh, better yet, know thyself and you will know God and the universe. This is on all the ancient wars of Egypt, is it not? Okay. Yes. Bismillah mm -hmm. ar-Rahman 19. Right. Yeah. Oh. Did 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 y'all hear what he just said? Bismillah, Elo Rahman Rahim comes up to the number nineteen. When you break down the letters, because there are numerals associated with each letter within Arabic as it is within Hebrew, and it comes up to nineteen. So it's once again the number nineteen and the number seven. Once again. So when you say Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim it starts off with the number 19, you activate the Kutalini energy then. And then as you go through the seven stanzas, with the ayin sound of each, you're actually awakening the seven eyes of Allah each time you say it. That's the reason why you must wash up and do voodoo. I didn't say voodoo. Voodoo, which means the purification act. Because you suppose you can't touch the Quran unless you do so. But that is all symbolic. Because cleanliness is next to godliness. So, nigga, wash your ass. Before you pray. You're trying to get into God and your ass stinking and funky and shit. God, I don't want to smell that shit. Allah don't want to smell that. You know what I'm saying? He don't want to smell that. Okay, okay. What time is it? Okay, we're going to have to hurry this shit up. All right. Uh, yeah. As a chant. But it comes out of 786, it's the same as the um, um and yogi. And also, you break down the Arabic letters and the, um, the, um, the square compass in the G, it comes out to 786. So when you see a mason and you have the, um, the square compass in the G, it actually represents the Bismillah the opening. In which the G symbolizes the eye of Allah, the eye of God. That is the symbol of Heru. <laughs> you see this? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Ayyelamin. Al-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki al-Madin. Iyaka nabudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Sarat al-Mustaqim. Sarat al-Ladin asnat al-Lehim. Garam maktubi al-Lehim wa al-Dolim. Amin. See, everybody got to say amen at the end of the shit now. You got to say it. You got to say it. There's something wrong if you don't. All right. Let me get through this. There you go. See how the temples are set up? It's set up on the body of man. Here go Jacob at Bethel, dreaming um, Genesis 28, 10 through 22. See, the Holy of Holies is the head. You see that? It says it directly right there. Holy of Holies, the head. Isaac Rock. What is the Rock of Isaac? Oh, that could be the Philosopher's Stone that the uh, so-called Masons as well as the Rosicrucians are looking for. The Philosopher's Stone. Isaac Rock. Hmm. Yeah, the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, that's mentioned within the Book of Revelations too. It's called the White Stone. Yeah, okay. 
basic man is represented for the genitalia in the temple, the mosaic. This selection is known as the outer gate. It is here that man gets food into believing he is merely human, flesh or cardinal. See, if you believe that you're... <laughs> I did. <laughs> Niggas ain't in philosophy. That's nigga philosophy for some of y'all that don't know. <laughs> this is where the second part comes in, the holy place of love, intelligence. For it is through the medium that we make decisions. In other words, life is um, shaped by those decisions, like food again in the body, thoughts for food. Um, we learn to make wise decisions through the two mediums, experience and through listening to the wise, to the wise discern their wisdom and benefit from it. Um, see Proverbs 3, 5 to 8, in which that man cannot always depend on his own smarts, for they have not been tested by the adversities of all evil, which is time. Time never was when man was not. So man always, even the word man itself means the mind. The mind always had to, in order to better itself, had to go through some trials and tribulations or adversity in order to make it better. This is the reason why now you've only been able to use 10% of your brain. So hence now through all the adversity that you've gone through, all the oppression, suppression, depression that you've gone through, now is getting ready to crack that shit up. You're getting ready to have to open up to more than just 10% usage of your brain now. You understand this? Truth lives forever, where a lie is only temporary, and light compares stone foundations on, um, to those of, um, of the sand. How do you get, um, where do you get intelligence from um, then? It comes from applying the old ritualistic answer of the question, how do you improve your self-masonry? The answer is by conversing with a well-informed brother who is just as glad to impart it as I am to receive it. It is love of two-way street, for if there is an absence of love in either the giver or the receiver, the complete message would not be heard or told. It is highly important that in Masonic Lodge there appear a good relation between the older Masons and um, who has experience and knowledge, which um, give them wisdom, and the young Masons who has the good, um, get, who has to get up and go about them, the will and only needs the way to cause the Lodge, as well as the individual Mason, to succeed. In the chest, uh, a form of um, transformation take place. Um, this is um, Romans 12, um, 2. Bring the individual Mason from conformity in the world to a transformation by the renewal of the mind um, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The third section of the temple is the Holy of Holies, the spiritual bowl, the head, which symbolizes where intelligent and actually spirit meets. Here's the symbolic G of the two sides, the York side, as well as also the Scottish side. Count these, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many is on this side? 33. So the three here give you 10, with these seven, which symbolizes the ten spears on the tree of life. These seven symbolizes the seven chakras. These 33 symbolizes the 33 vertebrates in your back. Is this true or not? Let's see. Let's count this shit. Somebody add this up. Seven, twelve, five, five, four. Somebody count that. How many? Thirty-three. 32 plus, plus what? Mm. Exactly. The 33rd is an honorary degree. So you can't get up, the Kundalini can't get up into the crown chakra unless you are initiated through the process. This is self-initiation that we're talking about now. Okay? Yes. That's nothing more than the same part of the fusion of the caucus in which that is at the point or at the um, point. Instead of it cu curving in, it curves out and it extends. So it's on the right, it's on the outside instead of tucking in. Right, that's that's right. That's that's that um some of that super B synergy. Because we do know that there were people who was made in laboratories, y'all. I, I mean, I just got to be straight up about that. 
It, right, yeah, right. Well, Yaku was a myth with the mythology. Yaku symbolized the sun. When they talk about he was playing with two magnets, the two magnets is nothing more than the north and south pole of the sun. What he's talking about is that the sun um, had a pole shift. And when the pole shift occurred, that gave the time or the place, as the brother was talking about, the astrological alignment gave the ability in order to form this cracker into existence in the laboratory. Because he couldn't be formed until that particular time, and that was around 6,000 years ago. So at that particular time, that's when that came about, all right? And he was formed in the genetic lab. Um, those in which that dealt with that process became known as Yaku, which means the supplanter within Hebrew, all right? I actually have pictures of, um, of um, the deity or uh, the person by the name of Yaku, the big head scientist right off the wards of ancient Kemet in the wards of Seti on uh, one in Abydos, okay? Huh? Oh, oh yeah. Um, hold, hold on, let me continue going through this. All right, you also have 31 nerves plus two nerves outside in which that give you 33. All right? Um, Boaz, um, which is supposed to be spelled wrong, Boaz and Jacin, um, the two pillars symbolizes also the two sacred nerves that crisscross at each other um, to the nostrils. In the Hindu teachings, the name of the two sacred nerves are the Eden and the Pingala. In your Bible, the story of Jesus being crucified between the two male factors is referenced to the same. The alternating nostril breath technique activates the sun positive electrical right nostril and the moon negative magnetic left nostril. The two sacral nerves or the nadis are activated. All right. Um, the exercise of the alternating breath technique, um, which I can show you in a second um, if there's any questions on it. Um, here we have those particular nerves are actually located to, as you see, to each of the particular organs in the body. In particular, you have seven major endocrine glands, the pineal gland, pituitary gland, thyroid, parathyroid glands, the adrenal glands, pancreas, as well as the ovaries within the woman and the testes within the male. Um, that symbolizes here um, those seven frequencies or seven colors or the seven seats of light called the wheels or the chakras. Um, second one, until Adam also was to his wife um, did the Lord make himself the lambskin apron and clothe themselves? Here's the signs of the gavel. There's actually the structure of the gavel is actually talking about the pineal gland, which is the master gland of the physical body. The pineal gland is the master gland, the endocrine glands located in the center of the brain. The pineal gland, hypothalamus, and the peri and, um, Pituitary gland comp um, comprises what is known as the third eye, the spiritual eye. Um, from a metaphysical perspective, it has been a common link between the physical and the spiritual worlds. It functions as a link to prophecy and increased spiritual awareness and consciousness. This is the 12-inch ruler, 12-inch um, gauge. The ruler, which is actually symbolic to each of these 12 deities coming from off the walls of ancient Kemet. Um, here, um, Heru, um, Ampu. Um, Tahuti, um, Amen, um, Amen, um, Oset, um, here, Sebek, also another form of um, Heru, um, this would be um, Ra, um, actually, Heru Ra, um, this is um, Amun, um, also another form of Amun, this is, would be Kanun, which is another form of Amun, um, here you have Pata, um, here you have um, um, and, oh, excuse me, this is Set, and here you have um, Ampul, and um, here you have um, Osar, as well as also um, the seat of throne of Osset. So this actually is also symbolic to another form of Osset, which is Behet Heru, which is symbolic to the eye of um, Heru, which is also symbolic to the sun disk. That is symbolic to the 12 tribes of Israel. In the book called The Twelve Powers of Man, you will find out that each one symbolizes a particular chakra within the body. Um, in the book of Revelation, it goes from seven um, chakras or seven stars to Revelation, the 12th chapter, where it have 12 stars. So soon you would be developing 12 stars, which means there would be extra glands um, coming into play based on the um, increased frequency um, and light that is coming in. Also symbolic to the 12 disciples, and their metaphysical components, which I don't have time to get 
um, into All right, within the brain stem or what the reptilian brain, you have 12 sites um, of melanin. It's called the um, locu um, corderalis, which is called the black dot. Um, then you have the substantia nigra, you have the bacalius, the prenatalis, the intra um, capillaris, the subcarius, um, the nerva um, trigenian, um, the mesen, the mesen, okay, the mesen um, cyphosis, um, the pontus, um, centralis, alters, um, the tri, the um, the trigmini, the trigmenti, um, pinadu, uh, colo, pontus, um, the parabacalius, the mendalius, doromotus, and the retro ambulgalius. Um, these are the 12 um, sites in the brain in which they are according to neutricides. Dr. Leila Africa, he says only two sites are activated in Europeans while well, all 12 sites is activated in you. That is symbolic to the ruler, 12 gauge ruler. This is symbolic to the 24 um, gauge. These are the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. 12 times two is what? 24, you have the optic nerve, the orgomolius nerve, the trigeminous nerve, um, the trigeminal nerve. Um, we can't see all of it, but um, these are the particular nerves here and it comes up to 12 and they sit around the seat of the pineal gland which sits in the center of the brain. This is the same as Jesus and his 12 disciples. This is the same as King Arthur and his 12 knights. This is the same as the sun and the 12 zodiac signs. And this is all in your brain. And hence 12 times two, which is 12 pairs, comes up to the number 24, which is symbolic to the 24 elders. That is mentioned in the book of Revelations too. Matter of fact, Rudolf Steiner, the founder of the Anthroposophical Society states the zoatic, the, um, the zodiacal nature is microcosmically reflected in the human being in multi-phosphorous ways. It says the 12 constellations seen under the dome of the firmaments are reflected under the dome of the human um, brain, um, being skull. As Zina has said, there are 12 principal nerves that originate in the head. This is true, but only a part of the picture. One can confirm nerves and nervous system, and that the peripheral nerve system is made up of three parts, namely the um, the cranial nerves, the spinal nerves, and the part of the atomic involuntary nervous system that is outside of the brain and spinal cord. Um, spinal cord. These three are the trinity above the zodiac. So this means once you have mastered these particular glands, you become above the zodiac, which is the law of karma. Hence, you no longer will experience karma. You would not become. Um, you have. You would not be under the um, the heading of karma any longer. Here, the cranial nerve sits around the pineal gland, the masculine gland, the endocrine gland. We just mentioned all of them. This is metaphorically decoded in the Holy Bible in Revelation, the fourth chapter, the fourth verse. And it sounds roundabout was four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in a white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. The four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him, um, lived um, forever, they um, lived forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne. That is all symbolic. That is all allegory. That is in your brain. So as you see, everything that I've been talking about goes back to the physical body in some shape, form, or fashion because the temple, the body, is the temple of God. What happens when you activate these 12 pair of cranial nerves? ESP, extrasensory perception, awareness of information, the events eternal to the psyche that are not gained through senses and not deductible from previous experience, often used to describe clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, intuition, clairgestance, um, precognitive, precognition, future telling, um, as they refer to it as psychemistry, telepathics, telekinesis, mind over the body. All right, we know this symbol. This is um, the compass in the square. Um, this is um, the Bible in which that's supposed to be Psalms 133. One plus three plus three is what? All right, which is symbolic to the letter G. So this is what is also a symbolic too, which is God once again. And plus, what does the 133 starts out saying? Anybody knows? Psalm 133, 133, what does it start out saying? No, 133. 
Right. This is composition school. We're going to get to it. Forming the triangle of God with the letter G in the center or the I of God or on top of the open Bible. All right. So this letter G symbolizes the eye of God, which is actually talking about the pineal gland. All right. Um, in actually in the first degree, got a second degree up here. Um, in a, into a print is the word God is revealed, and it is the acronym of the Greek word Goma Az Nubar. They go to I. The I comes up to 164. There's 64 permutations um, within your body, also called the I Ching, which is the book of change, which is talking about your genetic code. And this is talking about the coding within your body, which is 64 possible amino acid sequences. It's the same as the science on the chessboard, 64 squares. That is all based on the science of energy coming down from the star constellation Sirius and how it taps actually into your DNA. This is also how it comes into your um, human chromio, um, chromosomes. Um, atom numeral um, value is 46. Therefore, this is an esoteric indication of 23 chromosomes of man and 23 chromosomes of woman, thus totaling 46 chromosomes that produce life, human chromosomes. 23 hexagram in the I Ching means broken apart, and DNA irregular, um, irregularities occur every 23 actual. So Dr. Um, Max um, Perut says that there are about 100 million parts of nucleotide, um, nucleotides base dis um, distributed um, amongst the 46 chromosomes in a single human cell. Take a A, now this is in the Holy Kabbalah, take the A from Adam to Dama and out of Adam equals 45. If you take Eve, it equals 19. Thus 45 plus 19 give you 64. 64 also equals the 64 permutations of DNA, or what is also in the book, the hexagram. So we're gonna stop there and we're gonna begin to go into the answer and questions, okay? So if you notice, everything that Dylan actually with masonry goes back to the physical body, all right, which is the temple of man, um, which is also what is called the body, which is the temple of God, okay? Real yes. Quick, real quick, that, um, 130, uh, 133. Yeah. Yeah, read that. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And that is that's verse one. That is verse one. That is um, that's how it makes starts out. Real Behold quick. how good it is for brothers to dwell in unity. Real quick, the X chromosome in itself. Oh yeah, that, that's the whole. It's yeah, whole. So know, the Y is you know, really broken. Is a broken. Thank you. And, and you see, you said broken apart into twenty three angles, right? Right. Okay. So yeah. So um, it would be safe to say that it's degenerate. Yeah, well, no, it ain't safe. It is. Thank you. <laughs> So hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Um, no, 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 no. Let me ask you. <laughs> okay, next. Let me ask you. Thank you. Thank you. So, brother, would it be safe to say that the black man is a degenerate? How you say it? Degenerate. Degenerate X. Probably. Degenerate X. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Here's my question. This ego. Tahuti runs around teaching. And I told the brother, don't do it. You're going to get a backlash if you do this. I support him when he teach that the black woman is God and she was here first. I, I ain't got no problem with that. Uh -huh. But when the gods walks around and start talking about the black man can breastfeed, no. I have a problem with that. We did a DVD together, me and you, brother, and we did something on the holy orgasm, which he was talking about. We also did something on the anatomy of man. You are the perfect one to ask this question, brother. Can man breastfeed? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hold up. Let me get you on tape. Say that again, brother. Say that again. Thank you. Thank you. Can the black man breastfeed, brother? Wow. You got to understand, you gotta understand under stressful circumstances, the child has no mother. Thank you. No, seriously, listen, no, listen to what I'm saying. The man will adapt to the situation. The reason why, because yeah. the man is these genitive women already. Say that, wait, say that part of it. Say that again. Listen to what I'm saying. Under stressful situations, if the woman is killed as a battle, and oh, the man has no one to provide for the child,
He can actually produce milk. Thank you. Based off of that search, off, off of that situation. <laughs> Why? Because the man adapts. That's what we all do. We adapt to situations. So what is he again? Tell that part. Man is a degenerative woman. Thank you. A degenerative the only thing woman. that's bigger than him than on a woman is his dick. So As we just finished showing you. So can he have a period? That's it. No, uh, no. He can't? No. What do you think no. a wet dream is? Thank you. Wow. That's not a period. That's not it's a mis menstruation. Man, it's it's, 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 uh, it's semen is blood, brother. Man, what's y'all coming in? Wait, wait, wait. Look, 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 look. Wow, look, look, look. that's crazy. Somebody ask me some damn questions. Uh, but, 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 what the hell are we talking about here? Man, you even got a vagina. Uh, if y'all you, you like, want to know, get the book called Hilton you know, Team of the Secrets of Gen uh, Regeneration. Regeneration. Get that. Come on, get that. Secret of Regenerations. What are you talking about? The book called Secrets of Regeneration by Hilton Hotima. You got to ask a question. You got to ask a question. Okay, like this situation with Shaq, is that happening with a lot of men now because they are taking in the soil and that increasing the estrogen level in the men? Um, because so of the that which that we've been taking in, it has caused um, estrogen levels to raise higher within males than it's ever done before. Epigenic so yes, men are now beginning to um, have more um, breasts, you know, yeah. and producing um, milk and all types of shit. And that's so that's again, that's because the body can adapt to the stress levels and to the genetic food in which that's been introduced to. Right, okay. Um, I, I have two questions, just real quick. Mm -hmm. um, first question. Is about the York right side of masonry, about the York right. Um, my, yeah, my question um, I was told one time by a brother that actually the York right was actually the um, was the actual original right or, or the right, that especially specifically for um, brothers, you know what I'm saying, to go into. They said the Scottish right is like um, more of an um, exaggerated. Their degrees and stuff like that, but they said York is more original, more lines. Both degrees actually after you know, third degree, three times three is the number nine. And the original system of the ancient Freemasonry was that we showed there was nine degrees. Mm -hmm. And um, my second question is: I was at a lecture with uh, Charles Finch mm -hmm. um, two weeks ago okay, with um, Anthony Browder. Um, he um, was specifically talking about the coming of the um, age of 2012. And he was saying that it was actually supposed to be more, what they said, like the sex energy. They said it's supposed to be more um, revived in a sense, where sex is supposed to be a good thing. Do you, do you agree with that? I definitely agree. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's time for sex, y'all. That's right. Why wasn't joking? You know, when you told y'all niggas to start happening? You were correct. He was correct. No question. Yeah, we got a sister right here. You, you got to understand what we're talking about here. We ain't talking about with everybody, with someone in which that you actually have feelings for, That's that right. you love. That we talking about what's again, matching energies, enlightening you. We talking about consciousness. Yes, sir. All right. In the ancient days, we actually used to um, do charts before the couple got together, in order to see how the astral alignments were aligned and how they actually would um, be able to mate in order to bring forth children. It would be a good genetic match. And we use that astrological charts in order to determine those things. We got a sister right here. Please, um, can you go into a little bit more about what happens when um, you get past the heart chakra and you're dealing with the non common chakras? And, yeah, the first four chakras symbolizes. No, 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 no. The part I'm more comfortable with the new reality. So that they won't be as frightened of it. That's why, you know, that's not spoken about. It's, it's usually kept behind the spookiness of it, but people need to understand that that is part of the ascension process that we now get open to a new reality and that reality entails other beings of energy. Okay. Did everybody get what she was saying? Yes. No. Oh. Well, she's talking. <laughs> No, um, <laughs> now what we're talking about is um, higher consciousness and how to achieve that. Um, as we said earlier, sex is one of the quickest ways to achieve enlightenment yes. and higher consciousness. I mean, it must be done properly. Um, it must be done with the intent of love, in which that is transformed at the heart chakra, then into what is called true love, which is actually unconditional love, which is at the crown chakra or spiritual love. So there's a transformation which that takes place. Lust, love, 
unconditional, could, well, conditional love, because, you know, at conditional love, you know what I'm saying, sometimes you put restrictions on how far you will go. However, at unconditional love, when that energy transforms, there are no restrictions. So the whole science, once again, is enlightening yourself through the tools always that you have within you. We only got a chance to go over some of the tools in which I spoken of with the Freemasonry. But all of these tools exist within your human body or either within your head. And for those that don't know, there's 144,000 crystal like particles that is around the pyramid globe. Yes. That's the reason why it's called the third eye. Because those crystals are able to use the gravitatory rate of the Kundalini as it comes up in order to shine out in which they produce that halo in which their brother Joel was talking about, or that crown shot. Right. Which is oftentimes the halo that you saw on his um, on his own um, pictures. Um, for those who are highly enlightened, it will actually be gold. Right. That's the ultimate. And when it becomes gold, then you have reached the highest state of the chakra system. You have become the Christ. The Samadhi. Okay. Can I just add to that for those people that are familiar with the Bible? When they talk in revelations about the 144 mm -hmm. that will be resurrected, that's what they refer to. That's what it's talking about. Right. That's, that's actually what they refer to. The resurrection is the 144,000. That's actually talking about the awakening of the 144,000 crystal light, sand like particles in your brain. When the Kundalini comes up, it fuses and crystallizes those crystals. Hence, you get the crystal city that is mentioned within the book of Revelations. That is the crystal city. That is also the diamond. That is also the philosopher's stone. Right. And real quick, the 144,000 is also the number of sets. It's nine. Right. Which is the female. Bingo. And communication with the ancestors. And guess what? You would have, the best way for men can only to open themselves up through the sexual experience in order to communicate to the ancestors. First, communicate through you. That is it. It's through the woman. Of course, she wants to She's the magnetic attraction. Brothers must understand that you are the positive electrical force, while she's the magnetic negative force. Question. Um, while I was debating Wesley Muhammad, he had made reference to the etymology of Allah. Mm -hmm. And I think he said that Allah had been in existence linguistically for several thousands of years. And I think, if I'm not correct, he used the term ALA, Allah. A lot. Do you know anything about that? Could you? I mean, since you spoke about, that, I, I know about Urra, but what about Allah? A L A. That would be Hebrew or Phoenician. That would be come from Al, which is A L, Al, which is the same as L E L, which would be the Phoenician name for God. See, the reason I ask you that is because there is a God in Western Africa right. who is a female. Her name is Allah. Right. A, lot. a lot. No, not a lot. I'm not talking about a lot. But, but, it's the but in Western Africa, in Western Africa, Allah, A L A L A, right. is the goddess. Right. 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 Well, the masculine would be Obatala. Okay. That's what I want to do. Oh, I just wanted to do I was correct. Right. Because for every masculine force, there is a feminine force, a feminine, feminine counter. Right. So in Western Africa, you have Obatala, and his feminine counterpart would be Allah. Which is the same as a lot. As the brother was saying, in which that was the original Arabian name, pre Arabian name of a lot, which was actually a feminine aspect, which that was changed once they went to more of the patriarchal thing right. into Allah. But actually, that would be Riyadh and Ra. Right. Ra and Riyadh is the origin of a lot, or a law, and a law. Mm -hmm. Got a so question for you, brother. Come out of ancient Egypt, same deity. Uh, I remember a lecture that you did in the store, in my store, and um, since we're talking about the male and female energy here, and the chakras and the kundalini energy, correct me if I'm wrong, you made a comment that a brother or a sister who were gay, homosexual, <laughs> You can, it was because of the reversal of the energy. Of the Kundalini. And that you could 
through, through some type of procedure, reverse the energy and make them so-called straight again. Right, and, and I use you as the example. No, nah, he's, he's the example. <laughs> <laughs> you going to turn your ass gay, Jack. Jack going to go out there and so, stop that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what Jack told me when he came up. Jack said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Just make sure that it uh, keeps flowing right. <laughs> <laughs> no, talk about that part right there. Yeah, well, What's involved with that? Uh, energy uh, flows up and goes down the spinal column in the reverse pattern, which that causes homosexuality. The thing is that it's supposed to go up the spinal column over top of the head, and it's supposed to go in what's called a microcosmic organ. Mm -hmm. And so it's supposed to go in this format, what is referred to as clockwise. However, it's going counterclockwise. Right. And so because it's going counterclockwise, you counter the white zone. You know what I'm saying? Right. On one side. So that's what it's actually going to do. Right. What about through hypnosis? It can be um, can you um can you straighten the person out through hypnosis or yeah, something like that? Hypnosis is a form in which that you can actually um, embed the seeds so that they can correct themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or change their habits. Yeah, this is going to be the last question right here. Peace, brother. Um, I want you to know, um, brother, Alistair Crowley was talking about um, sex magic. He realized at yeah. one point in his life that it was like the highest form of magic. He, he, followed, yeah, past, he, he followed Pastor Beverly Randall. That's where he got his information from, the, um, from out of the Golden Dawn, those crucials. In which he formed his OTO, his um, Oriental Temple. Or, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oriental yes. Temple. Or, nah. Also, he formed the A8 too, which is called the Silver Stone. That's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the best way to reach a life, the quickest way. If you want to chant 20 years, then you'll be my guest. I ain't got 20 years to wait, so I'm getting up in the heaven's gates. Okay, let's hear from Brother Alain.